All right, a couple more examples of kinetic friction practice. Um, just going to work through these problems uh, to support what uh, was in kinetic friction part one. The puck accelerates from rest to 4.5 meters per second in one second. Oh, that's fast. The applied force causing the acceleration is 4 newtons. Determine the coefficient of friction between the puck and the ice. Oh, okay, so this was with an applied force. So there's something like a hockey stick, I suppose, pushing on the puck. Um, here's the puck. Careful, that mass is in grams, so we got to change that to kilograms. And um, we have a force of gravity and a normal force. This puck is on the surface of the ice. We're going to assume the force of gravity and the normal force are equal and opposite. And where we'd usually ignore them, we're actually going to need them in this problem because we're going to need to know what the normal force is. So, force of gravity is equal to negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram times 0 0.2 kilograms or negative 1.96 newtons. Means the normal force is 1.96 newtons. Okay. Uh, we have an applied force of 4 newtons, some frictional force pointing back on it, and we can't get that frictional force directly. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use our motion information to get acceleration, and then with that acceleration we can find the net force, and then with the net force we can find the force of friction. So A, in this case, this is the definition of acceleration. It's a change in velocity per unit time. And here we're changing by 4.5 meters per second in one second. So that is 4.5 meters per second squared. Using Newton's second law, we can relate that to the normal or the net force that would be required to cause that acceleration. F net equals ma times an acceleration of 4.8 meters per second squared, oh not 4.8, 4.5 and that's going to give us 0 0.9 newtons. So you pushed with 4 newtons and the result is only a 0 0.9 newton acceleration maybe visually you can see then that that means that the force of friction has to be 3.1 newtons it resists a lot of that applied force and then there's a little left over but if you wanted to do it mathematically you'd recognize that the net force is equal to the sum of the forces acting on the object or the applied force plus the force of friction so 0 0.9 newtons is equal to 4 newtons plus a uh, plus force of friction and then when the 4 newtons comes over the force of friction is going to be equal to negative 3.1 newtons so that's actually a negative. Now I have my normal force and I have my force of friction so I can relate those two things to each other through the coefficient of friction and here I'm going to get a very large coefficient of friction I guess that's kind of an oops, I didn't make this question in a way that makes a ton of sense. But uh, I guess maybe what we can imagine is that this puck got stuck in a puddle of water on the ice or something complex like that. That's going to lead to such a large coefficient of friction. Oh well, it doesn't make any difference to the actual approach to the problem. So That number is pretty unreasonable for a coefficient of friction on a puck on ice. But, given the numbers that we started with, it is the appropriate answer. So one more time, using the motion information, I can get acceleration and net force. That allows me to finish dealing with all the forces acting on the thing. Once I have the force of friction and the normal force, I can use this equation to come up with the coefficient of friction. Alright. While bowling late night in the supermarket, a frozen turkey is slid down an aisle with an initial speed of 5 meters per second. V1 equals 5 meters per second. 
the turkey comes to rest, v2 equals 0, traveling a distance of 14 meters. Determine the coefficient of friction between the turkey and the ground. So what I have here is I have some motion information. Again, in this unit, if we have motion information, we're almost always looking for acceleration. And that allows us to connect to Newton's second law. We should be careful with our signs here um, because this acceleration is going to work out to be negative and that's represented with the fact that the uh, turkey is slowing throughout this motion. It was given some initial speed and slid to, to rest. And so here we're going to get a fairly small acceleration, which makes sense because it's a frozen turkey sliding across the ground. So it's uh, going to be pretty frictionless. It's going to take a little while for it to stop. So that's the acceleration. Now if we imagine the turkey of unknown mass sliding across the surface, we're not applying a force to it in any way. There's a force of gravity and a normal force. Those two are equal and opposite, balance each other, and are uh, perpendicular to the motion. So neither one of them could be causing the speed up or slow down. So the only force available to be causing this object to slow down is the force of friction. What that means then is that this net force that I get associated with this acceleration is going to be the force of friction. It's the only force really acting in the direction of motion. or the only unbalanced force acting on the object. I can't solve for the net force directly because, uh, because they don't know the mass. So what I'm going to do is put the mass in as a variable and just leave it in for right now. And as often happens in these kinds of questions, if I just trust that that mass is eventually going to cancel out, I'll ignore it. What I will do though is I will omit my units at this point. I'll, I'm going to omit my units because if I have variables and units, especially when I have m for mass and m for meters, I find the two of the things can be confusing with each other. Now, since my force of gravity and my normal force are equal to each other, although opposite in direction, my force of gravity is going to be equal to negative 9.8 negative negative or yeah equal to it's going to be equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the mass or negative 9.8 m and so what that means is that my normal force is going to be equal to 9.8 m With my normal force and my force of friction, I can now isolate from my coefficient of friction. Dividing both sides by 9.8, I get a coefficient of friction of 0 0.0911. Not surprising, that's why it took a whole 14 meters for this turkey to come to rest because it was a very low coefficient of friction. This is a more reasonable result or maybe a more plausible set of numbers to begin with. So you take the kinematics information or the motion information, find an acceleration, use that in Newton's second law to get the force of friction. And then with the force of friction and the normal force, assuming that you're on a flat surface, the normal force is equal to the force of gravity then you can find the coefficient of friction. That's all for that's all for kinetic friction. I'll do some more extension problems in another video, but that's enough for now.